All right, folks, today we're going to take a look at the essential question, how can you find the surface area of composite solids? That sounds confusing, doesn't it? Well, let's kind of break that down. Okay, what are, what are solid figures? Tell me about that. They're like things you can hold. They're three-dimensional figures. A square prism, like a small tissue box. An ice cream cone. A small, uh, like a can of something, like a can of tomatoes. A small cylinder like that. One of these cubes. Okay, what are some of the measures that you can calculate for those figures? The outside. How much it can hold. All right, well, there are special names for the outside and the inside of a figure. Does anybody know what those names are? The inside is called the volume and the outside is called the surface area. You got it. Inside is the volume and the outside is the surface area. How can you find the area of composite solids? You can find the surface area of each part and then you can add them all together. Absolutely. That's what I'd like you to think about when you take a look on page 282 in your book. And you're going to see a figure that looks just like this. What I'd like to do is I'd like to give you some time to work in your groups and see if you could figure out First of all, a plan for how to get the area of this object that you see that's made up of all of these pieces. And then share with us not only what you came up with, but how you went about figuring that out, okay? The roof is what part of each figure do we need in order to find the area of this entire figure? Uh, I think we should, I think we would probably need to add the area of all the solids together to get the area of the whole prism. So the, the, are, you're thinking the side parts? No, uh, you can't forget the roofs. I mean, it's still a part of the figure, so. Perfect, you do have to remember the roof, I like that. We'd also have to add them all together. Ah, oh, we'd have to add them all together, and we can't forget the cone and the cylinder too, right? Yeah, right. absolutely. All right, this is great. So think about this now, and we're going to go to the second activity on page 283, and that's where our centimeter cubes are going to come in. So let's take a look at our bag of centimeter cubes. I've got one here in my hand. Let's take a look at these. And when you look at the centimeter cubes, what do you notice about each of the sides of the centimeter cubes? They're squares. Aha, they're squares. And if this is a one centimeter cube, then what would the area of that square be? One square centimeter. One square centimeter, exactly. So if the surface area of each of these faces is one square centimeter, that's going to help us figure out the area of the figures. What we're going to do is we're going to use these centimeter cubes to find the surface area of each of these figures that you see here. The first one, the second one, the third one, and then we're even gonna see if we can try to come up with a pattern to figure out the fourth one and even the fifth one. Okay, so you figure down the top. What was the top for that? Six on the, on the back. Right. So you would just add them all together. That's right. And that would give you the 24. Does that make sense? Yes. Perfect. You're welcome. Let's bring it together now and see if we can talk a little bit about what you discovered as you were making these cubes and looking for the surface area. So let's start with the one that's figure for the first one. That was just the one cube that you saw there. So would someone share with us what you figured out for that first row? I got the top and front and the side were all one centimeter. Okay, so for top, front, and side, you looked at this and said they were one centimeter? Okay. And the total surface area was six square centimeters. Six square centimeters. All right, let's go to the second one. A little bit trickier, right? Because this one has three cubes. For the top and front, I got two, and for the side, I got three. And okay, so for the top and front, you said you got two? Yes, sir. And the side, three? Yes, sir. All right. And for the total, square, uh, total surface area, I got 14 square centimeters. 14 square centimeters for the total. What do we think, class? Do we agree with that? Yeah. Perfect. I love it. Now it's getting a little trickier. We're going to the third object. Who feels daring enough to share their results for the third one with us? I got three for the top, three for the front, front and six for the side. Then for the total surface area, I got 24 
um, squared centimeters. And this one was tricky. I was talking to a couple folks about figuring that out. So you came up with a total for 24 here. Now the figure's starting to get a little bit more complicated. Maybe some of you decided to build that and maybe not, but work through in your pairs to see if you could figure out a pattern to fill in the top and front columns for fourth and fifth figure, as well as the side and the total surface area. Well, the top and front, it's going up by one square centimeter. And they're all both the same. Yeah, and they're both the same. I noticed something with the surface area. I saw that it was, the surface area for the first one was one times six. The second one was two times seven. The third one, three times eight. And the fourth one, four times nine. Very nice. And the last one, five times ten. Wait, what? Okay, great. So who thinks they have a pattern to fill in for the top and the front for figures four and five? Who thinks they saw one that they want to share with us? The surface area of the top and the front increased by one as you, as you move the next to the next figure. So both columns are four, five, six. Okay, so if we were looking at this one, two, three, you're thinking that it's just following that pattern, so this would be four, and this would be five? And the same thing here, four and five? And even if the chart went further, like you said, even a six and a seven. All right, that's great. Okay, who thinks they have a pattern to figure out this column for the side? The pattern we found out was to like add the whole number and okay. like, you would have one and then add two, it would be three, and then three to three would be six, and then six to ten, it would be, I mean, six to four, it would be ten, and just keep adding a whole number. So this would be ten, so the next thing we'd be adding would be five to that, which would make this one. Fifteen. Fifteen, right. And if the chart even kept going, we'd, what, add, add fifteen and six, and, and keep going like that. How about the total surface area? I know that you are finding that to be a challenge, but a couple of you were talking about some really great strategies for figuring out a pattern for the total surface area. Anybody want to share what you came up with for that one? I found that if you added up the top, the front, and the side, and then times that by two, you got the surface area. So you would do, for the first one, one plus one plus one times two would equal six. Okay. And then the second one, two plus two plus three, times two would equal 14. And, and I think we can all realize that the reason that that worked like that is because the top and the bottom are the same, and the front and the back are the same, and the two sides are the same. So if we can figure out the top, the front, and the side, and double it, we've got our surface area. I love it. I heard you guys were talking about another pattern that you saw. Did you want to share that other one as well? I found that if you times the side, and then so on the first one it would be one times six, would equal six. The second one would be two times seven equals 14. And then the next one would be three times eight would equal 24. And so you could do four times nine and then five times 10 to get the next so that So using some multiplication in there as well. Those are great. I love how you were really working with those cubes to come up with those solutions for this surface area. So great job, class.